A big welcome to you that is joining us on this Wednesday morning as we delve into God's word for today. I believe God will bless us as we interact with scripture. Um, let's pray and then we can jump into what God has in store for us today. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for every person that is taking time to watch this devotion. Wherever they are, may your hand be upon them. Uh, may your mercy prevail over their lives. And we welcome you, Holy Spirit, to guide us as we interact with your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, uh, we've been going back to the basics. Um, it's our theme for this year's Deliverance Church Moja, but also in these devotions this week, we have been going back to the basics, but more specifically, the basics of prayer. Uh, we are drawing from Matthew 6, 9 to 13, uh, there we, we believe Jesus was giving the disciples the basics of prayer, uh, the comp basic components of prayer, saying these are the things that inform uh, prayer, true prayer. Uh, these are the things you should be aware of as you approach the place of prayer. And we say that that, comp that model of prayer is divided into two. The first part is verse 9 and 10, it talks about God's interests in the place of prayer. And then verse 11 to 13 talks about our interests in the place of prayer. And we said prayer is not just a place of requisitioning things from God. It's a place of interaction with God. And so as we interact with God, we must be conscious of certain things. As we interact with God in the place of prayer and in any other area, we must be conscious of a few things. And Jesus was telling them, you must be conscious of these things. Number one, you must be conscious of the question of God's placement, God's, and the question of priority, God's placement in your life. God has to be number one, no competition. Then number two, we talked about it yesterday, we must resolve the question of God's presence in our lives. We must desire and value God's presence. We must, uh, you know, and, and I normally say prayer, Prayer is not primarily for us to express our needs to God. Prayer is primarily for us to express our need for God's presence. And so yesterday we said we must have a hunger and a thirst for God's presence, to be with Him, uh, to be more interested in the giver than the gifts, uh, more interested in the blesser than the blessings. Um, when that happens, and we saw that in Exodus 33 with the children of Israel, they said, hey, we thank, Lord, we appreciate the, the, the blessings you're promising us. But if these blessings are going to come without your presence, we don't want them. And so today I want us to look at the third component. Um, and this is the question of provision. Now we are beginning to talk about our interests. Because many of us, prayer is a place where we requisition things from God. And, and God has provided for that. But you need to understand from the get-go that if you don't take care of the issue of his placement, then the issue of his presence, then the issue of provision may not come to play. And I must say this, the way I read scriptures and I follow through scriptures, it is clear that if you sort out the issue of God's placement and you take care of the issue of his presence in your life, then you may not even need to ask the issue of his provision. But let's look at it, let's look at it. God has made a commitment to provide for us. If you read Psalms 23, from verse 1 to 6, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. God has committed to provide for us. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. You can see the things that God is committing to do. To provide, uh, to give us rest. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the darkest, you know, the darkest valley rather, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, God's presence. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I mean, this psalm is basically talking about God's commitment to provide for us. God has no problem in providing for our needs. Um, 
He'll take care of that. In fact, in the New Testament, we have a whole bunch of scriptures that talk about God's commitment to provide for our needs. Let's look at one, and then we can make a few comments and pray together. Matthew 6, verses 25 to 34. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. Somebody is watching this, and you are, you are filled with a lot of worry. You are struggling with worry. You are worried about your rent. You are worried about your children. You are worried about... And I feel God is saying to you that he's coming through for you. And so you need not to worry. In fact, you need to replace that worry with faith. Because God, you that is specifically watching, and I feel I should say this to somebody that is specifically watching, God is doing something about that which you're worrying. And you'll be surprised what God has already taken care of. Uh, let's continue. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. What you will eat, what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Uh, are you not of more value than they? Can one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown away into fire, will he not much more clothe you? God will take care of you, friend. You of little faith. So do not worry, saying, what will I eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things. And your heavenly father knows you need them. God knows you need that thing that you're trusting in him for. And I feel God is specifically speaking to somebody watching this uh, broadcast, this devotion, that he says he knows. He knows you're in a fix. He knows you're in that situation. And he's doing something about it. And what he's doing may not look like what you want him to do, but he's doing something about it. It may look like he's intervening, but he is intervening. He says, for the Father knows that you need them. But then he says, listen, put your priorities right. He says, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you, will be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. God is saying, look here. If you make me your priority, if you value my presence, remember verse 10, you know, may your kingdom come, may your will be done. It's almost being echoed here, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and you do things the way I want you to do them, then you will not even need to ask, because I know the things that you need. And I'm committed, as you've seen in Psalms 23, I am committed to take care of them. In fact, if you get your act right, you will not even need to ask for these things. They will be added to you. They will be added to you. See, the question of provision is allocated just one phrase in the Lord's Prayer. Just one phrase. Because if you posture in a certain way, you will not even need to ask. They'll be given to you. That's why it's been allocated just one phrase. But the unfortunate situation in my life and in the life of many people is that we allocate a lot of time in our interaction with God. We allocate a lot of time asking him things, asking him things. Yet when he taught us how to pray, he allocated very little time, just one phrase on asking for things. He says, because if you live in a certain way, you will not even need to make that prayer. God will provide for you. See, God has committed to provide for our needs. I must say that again, and not our wants and our fantasies and our luxuries. See, over and above our needs, there's a place for over and above our needs in the scripture. And the place for over and above our needs uh, is a place, it, and it, it, it depends on a couple of things. It depends on one, something called prudence. Prudence is how we manage, how we handle things, how we manage what God has already given us. 
with wisdom. And, and Luke chapter 16, verses 10 to 11, talks to us about the question of prudence. It says, he who is faithful with what is least is faithful also in much, or shall be given much. He who is um, unjust in the least will be unjust in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful with the unrighteous mammon, who will give you true riches? It says, for you to access over and above your needs, then you must learn to be faithful with what God gives you. You must learn to be faithful by tithing, faithful by, you know, using what God has given you in a wise way and not misusing it. And then God can trust you with much more. Okay, by helping others, you must be faithful with the little you have, then you will receive more. And also, the question of more than uh, your needs, uh, getting much more than just your needs is a question of purpose. Okay, Deuteronomy 8.18 it tells us, Deuteronomy 8, 18, And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to make wealth, that, that he may establish his covenant, his purposes, which is so to your fathers uh, as it is in, in this day. It says, God gives you the power to make wealth for the sake of taking care of his covenant. There's a purpose. Um, if you understand God's purpose, if you align yourself with God's purpose, then God will bring provision your way. God will bring provision and sometimes he can bring much more. The reason why he blessed Abraham is that Abraham may be a blessing to the nations. There's a purpose. And if you align yourself, it says in Isaiah 119, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. It's a question of alignment. So my question to you as we end this broadcast is, are there areas you must realign in your life? Are you overly obsessed by your worry? How will you replace worry with faith? How will you begin to replace uh, worry with alignment so that you know if I'm aligned, God will take care of me? How can you do that? Go and think about it. That's my challenge to you. The question of provision is a question of alignment. Is a question of posture. If you posture in such a way that God is number one, if you posture in such a way that you value God's presence, then provision will come your way. Lord, we thank you for those that have watched. There are some of them who are in dire need. I pray come through for them. Make a way. Turn situations around. And may you prove to them that you are committed to provide for them. And I pray that they will not just be provided for, but you'll begin to cause them to move towards the place of much more than enough. The place of purpose. The place of abundance. But oh God, I pray, help them one day at a time to look up to you and to trust you. This we pray in Jesus' name. You're there and you've not given your life to Jesus Christ. This is your opportunity. Say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I welcome you into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. Wash away my sins and write my name in the book of life. If you have said that prayer, I'll invite you uh, to get in touch with us and we will, we will, we will follow you up and help you. Call us, text us or WhatsApp us with the numbers on the screen and God will bless you as you do so. If you want to give an offering, you can do so. Um, the details are coming up on the screen. You can use pay bill 991648 account online account online and God will bless you as you do so. Have a wonderful day. May God meet you at the point of your need. Amen.